first you take the HAL-130 tripod and you level it by using these knobs here to move the legs up or down. Once you've found a level position, which can be done by using a simple bubble level, um, then place this tab facing north. We've figured out north um, by pointing at the north star. Don't use magnetic north because that can be off as much as 18 degrees if you're in the States. Um, and you can find the North Star by using the front two stars of the Big Dipper. Just draw a line right through them to the North Star. Um, you can look that up on, on the web to see a better description. One last thing, it's best to place the tripod on a grassy area as heat rises from the concrete uh, from heating during the day so that it will distort your image, especially at high power. We place the uh, Sphinx SXW or SXD head, they're both the same procedure, onto the HAL 130 tripod. First thing I suggest doing is actually loosening these guys a little bit. If you see there's a little gap there, you want to have that gap wide enough to fit over the tab. So just place the mount head on like so. Uh, place one hand here so it doesn't fall off while you're trying to tighten the knob underneath. So turn the knob until it's secure. And I like to test it, make sure it's on there pretty good. Okay. Then uh, what you want to do now is extend your counterweight bar, put your safety cap in a safe place, and go grab your counterweights. Next you place the weights on the counterweight shaft by sliding them up and tightening them down. Fairly simple. The uh, counterweights will be larger on the bottom than they are on the top, and that's so that when you put the safety on here, you actually have a little bit more room to push the counterweight down. There's a little more play. So I've tightened them on. I don't know exactly where they're going to go yet until I put the telescope on, so just place them anywhere. But put your safety back on so the weights don't fall on your foot. Alright, next we hook up the Starbook computer. i just place the Starbook here for the moment. We want to hook the power cord to the mount. Take your DB9 connector and you plug it in right here. Okay, you push it in, uh, tighten up the two connector knobs, keeps you from pulling it out by accident, and do the same on the Starbook. As you can see, here's the DB9 connector underneath, and I orient connector to right, tighten up the knobs. Okay, uh, the next step is to hook up power. Now there's several options on power. It comes with a battery pack to uh, power the mount. Uh, in this case, I've actually gone with their optional 12-volt power cord and a 12-volt battery pack, which can be obtained from several manufacturers. There also is a AC adapter if you have uh, AC power nearby, but for this demonstration, we'll use the DC cord. So you place the DC cord, you plug it in here, right there. You can also plug it into the Starbook to use the Starbook as a planetarium-type program. You can also use the Starbook independently of the mount but uh, we won't demonstrate that here. So I plug the other end in to my power pack and turn it on. Then flip your switch to the on position. And the Vixen logo should come up on your screen. The first time you come up, the screen will be in Japanese, as you can see here, but there is one English word that says language. So for anyone watching this video, most of you are going to be speaking English because this is in English. So we'll switch to language here and hit enter and you have your choice of languages. For the video, we'll switch to English. So now the second step is to set the local time, which we have local time setting right there. Scroll over. Uh, it'll come up with the year 2000 to start with, which it's not anymore. So we'll use the buttons to change it up or down to 2008. Scroll over, change the month to 10. And then to 28. And then it'll ask for your hour and minute. Um, a good thing to check is your cell phone because that's really accurate time. Uh, I think it's actually about one o'clock. So we're gonna put in 1300 hours. This is in military time. And then ask for your minutes. Okay, then you say okay. All right, the second step is location. So scroll down to location, hit select. 
The location here happens to be 122 West. So I will change this from East as it is set for Japan right now. So I change it to West. I scroll over, change this to 122 for our location. You'll have to find out what your longitude and latitude is. So I've set it for our longitude now. Now we'll set it for our latitude, which is North. Uh, it'll be set uh, preset to North. So uh, right now that's preset to 35. We want to change it to 45 for our location. Okay. Now this is an important step. There's a little thing that says hours here. You want to change that to how many hours from Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, our location here is minus seven hours. So I scroll down. If you don't set this correctly, it can be off as much as 15 degrees per hour that you're off. So when you, if you run through this and you set your scope up and it's not pointed anywhere near where it should be, uh, check that first. So, so I've set it to minus seven and we're on the Pacific time. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time, actually. So then I say OK. All right, now we're ready to go to the next step, which is placing the tube on the mount. OK, in this section, we actually put on the optical tube assembly, or OTA, onto the mount. To do this, loosen your head here. I like to do it uh, sideways like that. So tighten this guy back up. Make sure it's tight. Loosen these knobs. This is your safety and this is your main attachment knob. Now you'll notice on the bottom of the OTA you have a silver bar and then a black side. The silver bar is the bar, the side that goes against the knobs. You tighten them down. That's to you know, prevent gouging in the mount. It's also so that you put it on the right side. <laughs> okay, so I place this in a position where I think it's going to be balanced. Like that. Tighten it up. Notice how I don't let go of the mount or the uh, tube. So I tighten the safety, and then I check. It's on there good. Okay. All right. The next step is to balance everything. When you loosen the deck clamps and the right ascension clamp, the tube should stay wherever you leave it. And in this case, we're going to test the deck. See, it's moving slightly. That means it's slightly out of balance. Looks like it's heavier on this end. So to correct that, I'll loosen these knobs slightly and push the telescope forward a little bit. Tighten them back up. Try it again. Oh, look at there. Okay, so now we have it well balanced in the declination. So I'm going to tighten the declination up at this point and we'll go with uh, the right ascension, which is this knob here. So I tilt it like that, it's counterweight heavy. So that means I need to push the counterweights in. So we'll try it again. Excellent. And you can loosen both axes now. And no matter where you put it, it should stay there. Having the telescope perfectly balanced uh, puts a lot less strain on the motors, and that's a good thing. It also prevents the telescope from flying somewhere unexpectedly if you loosen one of the knobs.